Well, we're back for a little update on the snow cab on the snowblower tractor. As you can see, I have it installed. I have not put the windows in yet. That's what I'm about to do. But I just wanted to kind of show you what occurred. It fit pretty well. Start at the back here. This, uh, these little tabs were bent down. They went down, and so I bent them up, drilled into the back, mounted that one and that one, and that still leaves me a flap there for my fuel tank. And I went around the side and up in the front here. There was already a hole here. I should put a washer on that, I guess. But anyway, that was there. This piece of metal came with it as a brace, and so I put that down onto the the uh, foot rest. And then on the side, they had these little brackets with this brace across. So I drilled into the side of this, and then fastened it up here. And I did that on both sides and that really firmed it up. The uh, whole unit is good and strong. And uh, I didn't put any more braces in the back. I just left those two there. But the problem that I was running into, and as I mentioned in the other video, was getting these arms this is controls the chute, and uh, the other side controls the height of the lower itself. But both of these were sticking outside of the cab. I'll show you. Well, I had it in the other video. You can look. But they went out like this. So I did not realize that these pieces were on this cab. They were all scrunched back in and I never even knew it and I straightened them out and then come to find out there's a hole in the end of each one of these on each side. And so the thing was designed to be able to put the arms up inside the cab. But how do you do that? Well, it took a little ingenuity and a little bending. I had to heat this up and bend it. I had this was actually mounted here, and this is the frame of the blower that goes up and down when you lower it. Well, that wouldn't work because I have a clutch pedal in there, and every time you'd raise it, I'd have it adjusted right, and every time you'd raise it, it would go down, and then it would be on top of the clutch pedal, you couldn't use it. So I took that off there. I used two existing holes down in there, took a piece of channel, and I cut it, and then I put a piece of uh, three inch flat plate on it, and I took the, uh, the bar itself, and I pushed it up as far as I could because you had to clear the tire. When you turn the tire, that would hit the bottom of that uh, of this. So after I bolted it in place, it was still pretty loose. I mean, you could still move it. And so what I did is I turned the tire all the way in. I jammed a piece of two by four underneath this and the tire, which gave me a gap, you know, about like that. And then I bolted it. I put some tacks on top here to weld that in place and boy that sure turned out nice and with that being bent as you can see it goes right straight up into the cab and I'll show you what it does how it works you have a little crank here which will move your chute back and forth as you crank it and then on your chute, you've got that 
directional thing on the top, and there's a lever right here that you can push forward, and as you do, you can move it. So everything will be encased inside the cab, and so that's nice. This panel here I have to make yet to close this off. As I mentioned in the last video, there's some Velcro around the edge on the outside here that I can easily Velcro a piece on because that piece will have to be removable if you want to open your hood because the hood has got to clear that bar which it does. I mean you have to push that canvas back a little bit to do it but it will clear. So that was that side. That was not too difficult. This side became a real challenge. Um, this arm in its originality went way out side of the cab. So there was no way to reach it. So I thought, well, I'll just bend it back, which I did. But then when you took and everything was fine and I actually had it bent to the point that it would rest up against this brace but when you pushed it all the way down it would come clear down and it would hit this tire before it would lock into position so there was quite a throw that went clear up from there to there and I did not know how to resolve it um, but this is the arm and this used to curve down and had a handle that went down and so I took and straightened it and that gives me better leverage when I'm sitting on it rather than having to hold it down here so that was good okay but how do I get this so that that's all the further down I have to hold it and then when I release it it comes up and it it clears this, well, it just touches this bar. And the blower is sitting on the ground. So it's like, how do I do that? Okay, well, I looked and looked it over, and this apparatus down here is what, there's a rod, and it goes into us. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's like a plate behind this rod with a big slot in it. And as you pull it open, I'll pull it open and I'll show you what it does. Because see, I can pull this down now. And I only have to go down half the distance I was before, before it locks. You heard it click into place there. And so you look at this plate, and there, now you can see that slot right here hard to see with that black but there's a slot right there that uh, there's a little bit better picture anyway there's a notch behind this rod where that rod goes into and there's a big spring here that pushes it down to lock it in place and then when you pull the cable pulls the rod up and then you let the handle swing back and that lets your whole apparatus go down on the floor so what I had to do, I looked and tried to figure this out. There's two bolts. And again, it's hard to see. There you go. There's a bolt here and there's another one back in behind it. What I did is I repositioned the holes. I moved them both about a quarter of an inch back towards the, the mower. And reinstalled it. And then that gave me the ability to be able to only have to go that far down before it locks. So it works. I was tickled yesterday. So that was done. And so everything is in place now except the windows. And that is what we're going to do next. And I also bought, you can see how tattered this thing is, it's pretty <laughs> been through the mill. and. Uh, what I did buy 
is because there's some spots like up here that it's it's through, you know, and I don't even know what this these little pouches are on the side. Apparently they had some significance on the other mower. But it's just kind of seen as better days. So I didn't know how to really fix that up. That zipper there fastens into the bottom of this. You can see. So this will come up some. But anyway, to fix those holes, I purchased some of this tape. I've never used it before. Heard a lot about it. It's called flex tape. And this is that stuff that you can put in the bottom of a boot, you know, the I don't know if it's the tape or not, but it, it'll seal up a leak underwater. But it's supposed to be super strong and it bonds. So it, it is better than duct tape. Anyway, and I got gray to match this cover. So I'm going to be putting that over a lot of these different spots down here where it's all chewed up. Along the back there, there's some spots, but uh, it'll kind of dress it up and it'll seal it a little bit better than what it is now. I mean, there'll still be a lot of air that will get through it. I don't expect it to be airtight, but it'll be better than, you know, not doing anything. And uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at for that. But now we're going to go on with the windows. And so I will show you what kind of piece of plastic we have. It's about, uh, eh, I think it's uh, either an eighth or sixteenth of an inch. I think it's an eighth of an inch thick. And it's pretty flexible. I hope it'll hold up drilling holes in it. But I have just enough to do the entire cab. And the front piece goes across here. I got a back piece here, and then these two are, are the sides. So I've got to cut them all out, and it's got, you know, paper on it right now to make it, that's what the, why it's white. When you pull that tape back, you can see it's clear. There's a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom. But anyway, I'll bring you back when we get to that, and we're going to uh, take and cut these out and then I'm going to uh, position the new pieces and I'll probably put a couple holes I'm thinking about using wire ties rather than rivets because I think the rivets will probably crack it so if I just drill a couple holes and then wrap a little wire tie around there and the same thing right here wrap a wire tie around it and I want to kind of get it I'm not going to put the wire ties on right away but I want to get it located so that after I get it located, then I can put a bead of silicone all the way around the edge here. And we'll do that all the way around. Then I will slap that piece of plastic on and my holes will be pre-drilled so I'll be able to run my wire ties through and we'll tie it to all four corners, you know. And then after that, I can either put another set here, another set here, maybe, you know, do it that way, and then across the top, maybe three sets. We'll see. But that's the plan anyway, so I'll bring you back when we get that done. See how she looks.